in, so, I can't explain it, actually this is the whole in my head, this is not a good thing. Um, basically I was an extra in Harry Potter, not in Harry Potter, I was an extra, I was actually in Harry Potter, yes, but um, I did a video about being an extra in Made in Chelsea, and I worked with a couple of the Made in Chelsea boys on it, and it was basically like, I was like, right, so obviously I've now had a bit of that YouTube fame, I'm going to become a TV star. So I got a couple of the, the Jamie and Alex from the show, and we did a video about how I'd been cast as an extra, but I kept messing up the whole time. And it was like there were scenes in the background where I would like, try and like, jump in front of like you know the main cast and try and get like my bit, my bit like five minutes of fame. Um, so that's probably my favourite idea. I like it. Thank you. Um, Nikki, so your episode of My Life launched on Monday yeah. on CBC. Congratulations on that. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that, that process? So um, I originally did a My Life um, episode in 2016 called Born to the Dog um, on CBC, and um, that basically followed me winning Junior Bowling Dog um, and receiving a Pride of Britain award. Um, and then two years later, um, they for some reason wanted me to do another one. Um, and so um, they basically followed the ups and downs of my life last year. Um, and I basically wanted to show the harder parts of my life because I feel like sometimes social media can be a filter for the good parts. Sure. And that's sort of what I love about YouTube. Um, everyone's becoming a lot more open about the harder parts of their life. Um, and so that's what I really <coughs> did in this my life because in the last one it was a little bit more positive because that year was a really great year, whereas last year was quite a hard year. Um, Health-wise, and so I wanted to show, like, you know, adults and children what it's like living in a different illness. But it was a really great way to show it because I feel like sometimes people find it hard to understand what it's like, you know, having mental health problems or living with illness or things like that. And so having that visual representation was really helpful. Um, and yeah, so it was basically just about what happened in 2018. Yeah, it was and that's obviously a very, very personal story. How yes. was it um, working on that with such a wide, like, big, big production team and not just you in front of a camera in your I think luckily, because I've done one before, it was the same production team, so it felt not too scary because I was quite familiar with them. Um, but I think because this was more personal, it felt, when I was watching it, it felt more raw and, like, I was reliving it. Um, but I think... Even though there were some parts where I was like, right, let's shut the camera. So I had quite a big operation in August. Um, and that was when I just said, they just filmed me walking into the hospital. But I, and they wanted to come in during, um, whilst I was inside the hospital. But I just said, this is when it's a bit too bad for you. But I did want to make sure that I did show you the harder bits to a certain extent. Because I think then people can show that, you know, us guys, people that are on YouTube and social media, we all do have problems to go through. And I think it's Absolutely, and, and that episode should be an eye player now. Yeah, so yeah, 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 if you want to go and watch it. Um, and Mark, you're a regular on the Secrets Out podcast, would you say? I was on it once. Just once? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be having me back. I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah. How do you, uh, are you a fan of podcasts? Yes, yeah. I love them. And yeah, I think they're very different to YouTube. Is that your question? Sorry. Well, yeah, I, was gonna <laughs> oh, sorry. Say, no, I was going to say, how, does, how did you find... Um, sort of your tone of voice in podcast form versus YouTube. Mm. Because I think this podcast is you know, just that long, you can speak for an hour and then yeah. like... Um, with podcasts I have been on, I have spoken way too much. <laughs> um, but I think, I don't know, I, just, I love them both, they're both different. Mm -hmm. And when I do YouTube, obviously if I'm not walking around like that, I kind of forget that the camera's there, and then obviously if I'm sat around a, people, um, a group of people that I'm really comfortable with, I forget the mic's yeah. there. So I just, I find it quite similar, um, but obviously it's different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love podcasts. And um, would, would you like to have your own? I would love to have my own. What would Is my manager in <laughs> I would love to have my own. <laughs> what, what would the topic be, do you think? I think it would just be like, what my YouTube channel's like, I think yeah. it would just be like, just really casual, relatable, just people talking about everyday things that people go through. I think that just, like, just resonates with everyone. Um, yeah, and I just love opening up. Yeah. So. Like, and in, like an interview series, <laughs> yeah. I, I could definitely imagine that. Yeah, I would love that. How do you see your channel evolving? Um, I just, I just want to be able to just keep doing what I'm doing. To be honest, I don't really <laughs> look into the future that much. But as long as I'm able to, to still do what I'm doing, hopefully make people laugh and happy. Um, yeah.
presenter would be the dream. Would you like to be a TV presenter? Would I like to be a TV presenter? I can see you on the TV. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, I would. I think it'd be fun. It'd be, it's obviously very different from YouTube. You're being told what to do. Um, and I'm just really rubbish at reading like all cues. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's on the table. Yeah. But uh, at the minute, YouTube always comes first. So. Daniel, what do you feel are the best? Of being a creator, and are there any are there any standout defining moments that you've had so far? Oh, that's a lot. Question. <laughs> um, maybe it's early. I don't really understand what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> um, so, like, so since starting YouTube, let's break this down. Yeah. What are the best aspects of being a YouTube creator? Um, the best aspects are being able to be yourself and show your personality, whichever personality uh, comes that day, but because I go through a lot. <laughs> I'm not crazy, but... <laughs> um, and then what did you say the worst? I know yeah. that the, be the, the best are like the standout moment in your, in your YouTube career. Um, well, starting with 30 days ago, what's <laughs> happened? Um, just being welcomed, I yeah. think. Um, there's so much love. I really read into just like... There'd be a thousand comments, and there'd be like one. There could be a thousand comments in a chat, um, and there's like one negative one that will like send you into a deep spiral of depression that cripples you for a month. That's very dark. But like you can all can relate, you know. It's like you hone in on those ones, you search those words, you like look for it almost because you know it's there. And then I just started blocking words. Somebody told me to do that, and I don't really see anything but positivity. So. That's really nice. Nice. What was the thing that you were most worried about when you first started YouTube? Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, that was a weird noise. <laughs> I honestly think, I wasn't worried about it, but I was kind of like, because I come out of uni and I didn't know what the hell I was doing, I was kind of worried what my parents might have thought. Like, what is this? Because at the time when I started, it was literally just people filming videos in their bedrooms. That's all it was. So explaining to that and being like, Mom and Dad, I think I wanted something. And then being like, okay. This, because obviously I couldn't do both at the same time because I was working with my dad. But then I was just like, I think this YouTube thing may be a thing. So I was, I was, yeah, set on that, but I was worried about them reacting. Obviously they're great, but it's a big thing to tell your parents. <laughs> For me, um, I can't sit down and just like throw up a video. I mean, I try, it's just I'm not comfortable with it yet, so I have like a bit OCD when I film. Like if it's not perfect, if the lighting's not perfect, if the sound isn't right, um, like I film videos and I haven't uploaded them, just because I'm like, oh, I'm at the beginning of my YouTube career, everything needs to be 100%, just because everybody around me is like, you know, amazing and super talented. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm just getting comfortable with being like myself and being flawed and you know just being human. So yeah. <laughs> um, I think for me um, at the beginning it was the negativity because obviously during YouTube I mean everyone I think one of us have probably had to hate comments before um, and so I think it was knowing that I was putting myself out there for the whole world to see um, and I think at the beginning I was a lot more insecure about the way I looked but I think through doing YouTube it has really built my confidence um, but I think at the beginning I'd be, you know, I'd wear loads of makeup and videos because I was insecure or I'd use help for the fringe to try and hide my eye but through doing it I'm just now you to love yourself um, and I think at the beginning I found that quite hard about YouTube as well. Um, I think it's like, when you put yourself out there as well, um, you just don't know what's going to come back. Uh, so, you know, anything can come out of your past and things like that, and, you know, I've not, not been perfect in the past, I'm sure everyone has made mistakes in the past, so you just don't know when you put yourself out there into such a <laughs> wide platform, you're like, oh my god, you know, anything can happen. Um, so, yeah, I think that was quite scary, and obviously it's always, it's not nice to see, like, hate comments. I get quite angry as well. I, I, I bicker with people in the comments. I'm like, what the hell are you saying? I try and fight back. Um, but uh, yeah, it's learning to like, deal with that. Do you mind what people <coughs> say about you in public when you're filming video? Um, I try to block it out. 
It's only when I'm editing that I can see people in the background being like, <laughs> and turning around and being like, oh my god. Um, but no, I don't really mind. If they say something, I'm just like, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it makes for a really good edit when you, like, punch in on their face. <laughs> so, I really think that's, like, a good, it's a good thing. Um, nobody's really heckled me or anything. If anything, they're just, like, in awe of, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's really not that bad. Yeah, um, I don't think I really have people say, like, mean things when I'm in public, but it's kind of when... People realise that you're in public talking to a camera, and then they're like, "Is she okay?" Um, <laughs> um, but I think really, I just when I'm um, in public filming videos, even though it's a lot more difficult because you are aware of everyone looking at you, I try and just pretend I'm in a bubble and just film it. But it's never been too bad for me. Um. I, 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 I mean, I, I'm not sure this guy will shout like, oh, remember I saw your video, this guy will shout like, you posh, T, W, A, T. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you kind of, it's like, it's like being, it's like being, it's like, it's like I, 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 would you drop everything and get on a boat? <clears throat> I don't like boats that much. <laughs> if Chrissy wanted to get on a boat, I'd be like, what? Did somebody switch medication or something? What? Where's the, where's this answer coming from? Is the fog new? I'm just noticing the fog. I request it. Okay. Because <laughs> we're talking about boats and everything. I said about 38 minutes in, if you could uh, bring in the fog. <laughs> At a mythical German says, if you weren't making videos, oh hello, there she is. Hi. Uh, if you weren't making videos together, but you were separate YouTubers, what genre of videos would you be creating? Peeling videos, just only peeling things. We were practicing for our show uh, yesterday morning in my hotel room. And of course, you know, Red's like playing the guitar, and I'm sitting over here, just you know, just singing. And we're just having a ball. And we, we played a couple of songs, and then I, I was like, okay, we should practice this one. We don't have this one down. And then he's, and I look up, and Red's like, he's like, the pick guard on his guitar, all of a sudden, I realized he's, he's like, oh, I didn't realize this was here. He's had this guitar for, how long? Less than a year. <laughs> Let's just say a year for the sake of a year. He, he starts peeling off the pick on I'm like, whoa, wait! I just gotta put this on my Instagram! Shout out to my Instagram, Link Lamont. Yeah, but, but I mean, and then he, he, it was off. And I'm like, dude, you can't do that to me. You can't peel something. But we're supposed to be satisfied by just witnessing it. I only saw the second half of it. You were like, hey man. You'll never believe this, but there's a thing here that I didn't realize I could peel, and I know you're really into that, so would you like to do it? Or you mean I just started doing it? You just little like, Oh, I thought you said that Rhett said that. I was like, that is so kind. No, I didn't say that. He I did. I started peeling it. I saw that. Oh, by the time I looked up, it was, I heard the sound. I was like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> I looked over there, and it was off. He just had it dangling in his hand. I was like, no. Uh, I would have a YouTube channel where I applied uh, plastic shrink wrap to different things. <laughs> oh. uh, it was, and so everyone would have to watch my videos before they'd watch yours. <laughs> 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 you want to see this refrigerator receive the plastic? Go to Red's channel. <laughs> At Cap Thor Iron Bat. Okay. Have you ever had, quote, friend breakups throughout the time you've known each other? Mm. Ooh. I don't think we've ever had like a like an official breakup. But yeah, that, that implies that like we went time without speaking to each other. Or like, what, what, a, a, a breakup is how long in your mind? How I don't think a breakup is a breakup is of any of any length specified length. I think it's just it's more official. It's like an acknowledgement. I think what has happened to and not recently, but when we were in school, there was a few times where. I would get uh, a girlfriend, 
and uh, and then that was she, she was my friend. <laughs> She's my only friend. <laughs> it's, it's totally true. For you know, for a while. So we, the red and I would break up. Or Link would just you would just see me a lot less. That happened with uh, Jamie. Yeah, but then the weird thing is, is that after I broke, and that was only like a month. I dated her for a month, so. And then, after I broke up with Jamie. You dated her like six months. No, a month. It felt like six months though, am I right, Link? <laughs> <laughs> was it really that difficult for you? It was only a month. It was the first month of our, yeah, of our freshman year. And then, that's why the FLL dance was that fall. We, we, we haven't made it out of the fall yet. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, she, you, bro you broke up with her. She shows up at the dance. And then she's like dancing with you. Yeah. <laughs> and you dance with her all night. Well, yeah, it takes two people to dance. <laughs> to tango. We did not tango. I didn't know what... Uh, you didn't know how to tango. I didn't know how. We didn't even have known what that was. Jamie and I discussed it. We're like, do you know how to tango? I was like, no. I was like, me neither. <laughs> Over the past six months, I've learned how to tango. Now I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm a freshman in high school. I know how to tango. <laughs> Um, okay, we're running out of time. So oh gosh. I'm, I'm trying to, to pick them. Um, Rapid fire. Here's, this is a very important one. At Nova, Novak Keel. Man, I'm butchering this. Which shoe do you put on first? Left, right, or do you leave your shoes tied and flip them on and off? Or do you untie the shoes every time you take them off? I want to hear your answer because you probably have a system. Well, I don't think we have 20 minutes. <laughs> well, let me, actually, let me guess, because you know, my answer is, I don't, there's, I ne definitely don't. Who gives an expletive? Which, which is one answer, is closer to me is the shoe that goes on first? Like, which one I grab first? Oh, that's yeah. the right shoe, right foot. Uh, and I actually tied these shoes this morning, because they're low tops. I don't tie high tops, you may have noticed. Um, there was a question that was like, why are your shoes always untied? And I was like, I never noticed that. Well, if you've got a pair of high tops, just go a day without tying them and you'll be like, oh, you don't have to tie them. You'll never tie them again. Um, I don't believe that you have a, that your system is specific to shoes. I, 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 you're so specific about things, but I, I can't think of a logical reason why one shoe would be before the other. And so therefore, I don't believe that you'd actually pick one shoe before the other. Am I right? For the first time ever, you were right. Yes. No, but... <laughs> but... I mean, it seems that I need to form a system now. So I'll, I will be working on it. I take this as a personal challenge to figure out which foot... And for me. You know, what's right for me is not right for everyone. But I take it as a personal challenge to, to, uh, to parse that. To sort it. I was going to ask each of you: Do you, do you think that YouTube has had a, a positive or a mental, uh, a positive or a negative effect on your mental health? Uh, <laughs> it's poisoned my brain. <laughs> Is that dramatic? Me? <laughs> dramatic? <laughs> Wait, has anybody had a positive mental health experience from YouTube? Even, I mean, from like, you know, it could be a, a comment or <laughs> reaching out and saying something nice, and you thinking, oh, actually. Yeah, this is, this is providing me with some support or something like that. I think it's helped me become a lot stronger and, uh, like, confident person. Like, I, when I started, I was like, I talked to no one. And now I'm, like, sitting here and I'm not, like, freaking out about it. Um, I also kind of don't care anymore. <laughs> um, I, I think that I've learned a lot from about myself through YouTube and I think uh, just, like, meeting people through YouTube, I've learned a lot from, and I've met, had like relationships, well not relationships, but like friendships and co like colleagues and stuff. I've learned a lot from them and our like back and forth relationship kind of thing. And that's all helped me become much stronger and uh, I've learned a lot about myself that I would have learned eventually, but it's been sped up because I've been exposed to so many different types of people because of YouTube. I, I want to amend my first statement. <laughs> it, there is a lot of positive, like, uh, but my problem with YouTube is I feel like my 
personal worth is directly tethered to what's happening online. So when it's great, it's great. Like when the internet loves me, they're like rallying behind me. They're getting me to like number one on iTunes. They're like putting me on the billboard charts. They're saying like, you're so great. Like, <laughs> and like they're hyping me so much. And then that's when it's like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I have all this, these people who support me and want me to do well. But then when you get a little too far, then people start knocking you down. And it's always an extreme where it's like, Everybody loves me or everybody hates me. And then it's I either love myself or I hate myself because I'm a very sensitive person who's like feeding off of the energy of what's around me. When it comes to that kind of thing, I always remember there's something that Bo Burnham said, which is like, hate is gonna hate, love is gonna love. You have to disregard both ends of the spectrum. Uh -huh. And it leads to a nice, healthy <laughs> We love Bo. I... Oh my God, I saw him on the street the other day and he went, hey Gab. <laughs> he tapped my shoulder. He went, hey Gab, what's up? So All those years of stalking. <laughs> I, I don't have a time machine, so I can't I can't uh, kill Hitler. Uh, no, I don't have a time machine, so I can't say what the effects of uh, YouTube have been ultimately on my mental health. I, I can tell there's definitely been points where it's exacerbated issues, and and you know parts of it wouldn't have occurred if I didn't have my my life so in the public eye. So I can't really tell. I can't really say definitively, personally, how well the effect is. But I can say that. If I hadn't been making videos about mental health, there are people out there that would not have ever learned to, or ever had the confidence or to get help themselves. So the positive effect is every person that comes up to me, uh, you don't have to, but, um, and, and says like, oh, from watching your video talking about this issue, I recognize some symptoms of it myself, I went to get mental health, uh, you know, and, I, and I took those steps and I'm, I'm now doing much better. That is objectively a positive thing that came out of, of, of talking about you know, my own issues. Um, so for me, it's had I have it's a neutral impact. I don't know, but for other people, I know that good has come from it, and that does make it infinitely worth it. And that was the goal at the start when I started sharing any issue was to make something good out of something that's ultimately just going to happen to me anyway, uh, and that's dope. <laughs> Detail your healthy coping mechanisms, because as the, as the quote-unquote neurotypical among yes. us, um, I, I do that, but that is the yeah. term you're supposed to use. Did you say um, neurotypical? Did yeah. You say normal? Whoa, really I've nice. never heard that word in my life. Yeah, <laughs> so as the non-loony, um, <laughs> what are your healthy coping mechanisms that have helped you through tough times stave off uh, <laughs> this? I. Most of the time, it's like walking away from the internet and hanging out with people who like me in real life. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, who? No, I was deranged before the internet. So, I don't know. I think some people are just weird. And some people are normal. But what's like, I feel like more people are f***ed up than not, right? Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Raise your hand if you're f***ed up. I'm just curious. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. Who would, who would like consider themselves like normal? Whoa, we got like a oh, solid seven. Tight, congratulations. <laughs> they have good mothers. <laughs> Hannah, based on what you said, can you take the flip side of that? And, and Jane, um, who's in the audience, has asked, does meeting other creators who have also spoken out about mental health issues kind of help? Because they may not have gone through the exact same thing, but they can kind of relate in terms of the lifestyle and the pressures that are involved. Um, I mean, my experience is with physical health issues, and for me, like, searching um, for other, specifically young women, like, I, I needed to be able to, like, identify with people who were, who were like me, so it was, like, young women who have had to have surgery to have stoma bags, that to me was amazing, and, like, kind of what really helped me through adjusting to like my new life, my new body, and um, like, I don't know, just finding people who have gone through it and similar age to me and how they've dealt with it. And I imagine it's quite similar with like mental health stuff too. But like for me, those two things, like my physical health and my mental health, like connected to that, so intertwined, yeah. If there's one, I want to ask this really quickly, if there's one bit of advice that you could give your younger selves, knowing now what you do, what would it be in terms of mental health? 
delete Vine off your phone. Go back. <laughs> it's not worth it. No, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Not landing today. <laughs> I would say for me, I hid so much. I was, I mean, I'm still such an angry person, but I used to put a lot of sadness out in anger because I was too embarrassed to admit that I was sad or hurt. So I would do more like angry things and like lashing out. And I probably was like that up until like four years ago. So I think my biggest note would be, it's okay to be sad, acknowledge that you're sad, process why you're sad, find people to talk about being sad, or else it's gonna come out in really toxic ways. For me, I'd just say like, hey, just, 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 just go to bed for 2013. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't unload everything you're feeling live online and make a real tin of yourself. Um, because that was, that was like how my, like, real low fall uh, manifest itself was in, yeah, oversharing excessively. So, yeah, I would just say, yeah, do talk to real people. Don't just jump in front of a camera or jump on Twitter because you're going to handle this poorly. You're going you're gonna to have a, a, a negative impact on strangers and the ones you love and yourself. Um, so, yeah, talk to a human idiot. Uh, yeah. Well, that seems like it's good advice as any, I think, to us. Do you want to add anything, Jake? I think just, like, put energy into yourself. Uh, don't worry about having to be there for other people, kind of thing. Um, I was just going to say, ask me again in five years, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'd just love to know how you got into it. What was the first day that you decided to put a video up on TikTok? Vicky, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, so I used to work on Facebook. Uh, that's how I started. I was making makeup videos um, back in the day. And I met a chap who was on Musical.ly, because that's what it was at the time. He was like, you should just get on music, it's really fun and it's, it's quick and no one's really doing makeup. And then, yeah, here we are, two years later. Very simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was just bored and I, yeah, I don't know what it was. It was like three years ago now, I think. Um, I was on Instagram and I just saw a dancer post about music Musically. But yeah, so from that I was just like, oh. See what that is. I posted on there and it kind of just blew up. Um, I started on Vine. If you guys know what Vine is, all right, Vine. Vine. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and from Vine, when that was like, we had three days' notice that that was just going to disappear. And musically, just grabbed us all and went, join. <laughs> and I was like, yes. And so it's a new platform. It's quite similar. So I just started making comedy on there instead. But yeah, boredom as well as Tessa. Um, I'm from a really small island in the Channel Islands, so there's nothing to do there. Very boring. It's not Jersey, is it? Guernsey. Oh, I mean it's Jersey, very boring. <laughs> <laughs> Guernsey's a bit smaller, so there you go. Um, but yeah, that's how I started doing stuff. Just boredom. And I loved media and like acting and stuff as well. I uh, did musical theatre and media studies at school, so just did all of them together. And that's what the music is. I feel like I'm seeing more and more violence now on TikTok and TikTok. No, but I like it because I'm like, oh, the good old days. Um, uh, yeah, so I started TikTok about two years ago. I did YouTube before that. Um, and again, it's about boredom on YouTube. So happened to be at an event that I met Hussein, who's a singer on TikTok. And he told a load of us about the app. And we were all having dinner. And we all just decided to create an account. And it was one of those apps that you kind of went back to every few months and, and then it just stuck. It took a while to stick, probably about six months in total before I started uploading videos. <coughs> Mine was pretty much the same as Vicky. Um, I was like making videos for YouTube and then I just decided to start shortening them and putting them on musically. I miss the music in days. TikTok in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so exactly the same as Vicky. What? would be your biggest bit of advice for someone who wants to go and build a following there? Holly, we'll start with the TikTok queen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, advice. Consistency is like key because so many people aren't consistent. They'll just be like, oh, I got one hate comment once. Okay, bye. Like, I'll just leave the, the app because it just hurts, you know, when you get hate sometimes. Um, consistency. Um, 
not letting people get to you so much because I think especially in like social media generation you let so many people get to you. Yeah. Like you read something negative and you just go, oh, maybe I should delete that. Um, another one would probably be to just be you and stop copying people. Like I know it's so cliche to say be yourself because you know you are. Like everyone is themselves. It's true, it's true. And like not letting if you're you being yourself isn't getting like a million likes. It doesn't matter. Like if your friends are laughing at it, if friends are enjoying it, or you've made something nice like some art and that you're proud of, then don't think like, oh, it's not getting a million likes. I'm not. I'm going to delete that. Just keep going. It doesn't matter as long as you're happy with it. Like I found that I've slipped into in the past, probably more in the Vine sort of days than musically. But I slipped into okay, that girl's making funnier content than me, and it's doing better. Maybe I should be more like her. Like, yeah. I did that with Instagram as well for a while, like, I'd see Instagram pictures of girls, like, Instagram models that were, like, super, <coughs> like, mm, and I'd be like, oh, I want to be more like that, do more like that, because that does well. And the second I stopped doing that, it was just like, now I'm going to shoot the face on my Instagram story. I want to do this, I want to do that. <laughs> then I started to grow, because I was just doing what I feel comfortable doing, instead of pretending to be that. So like when you just being yourself is different from what yeah. yeah. But I find it hard though sometimes too. Like when you slip into trying to yeah. okay, maybe I should do more of that mm. and you think no. Be Holly. <laughs> just be Holly, stop it. Yeah. But yeah, they're my top three tips probably <coughs> on any social media. Yeah. 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 I think as well, I know there's um I found that a lot of people I know started TikTok and they were really shocked at first by how they didn't grow at all. And I think they almost did take the app slightly for granted because they were, I don't think I want to say this because I'm not going to name them, but they were like just putting up the most awful basic videos that had clearly taken about five seconds to make. And I felt that they weren't understanding it because actually we do put a bit of work in. I know we were talking about it being quick and easy, but there's still an element of work that goes into making any type of content. And I think people think, oh, I'll just start TikTok and I'll just like film it in five seconds, I don't know why I'm not growing. And I actually think it is an app that is, I think people underestimate the app at the moment. And actually, if you look what the Americans are doing yeah. and the content, I mean, I saw someone using like a stunt double the other day and a drone in one stunt video. Yeah. Um, so yes, so like, some of the miners are putting up their content and they, they have real money that goes into yeah, it, real, you know. The transition videos, I mean, I've done one of those transition videos, it took me like, like days, yeah. days. I still <laughs> Just don't Just because the video is like 12 seconds doesn't mean it can't take days. Yeah, what well, do people do with like transition stuff like that? I've just got no idea. Is that so, days of work? <laughs> <laughs> so this wasn't a transition though, this was an actual yeah. Stumped double, and I was like, "This is amazing." And I think people are expecting like a quick, a quick cash in, a quick rise to fame with it. And I think that's just that just doesn't. That doesn't happen. exist anywhere. Yeah, and I think as well when it comes to brand deals, people don't quite understand and go, "Well, I've got this much money for a YouTube or this," you know. And there was, um, it's different. You're making a 15 second video, and it's going to be quicker. So you're going to have to accept that you're going to maybe get less money for it, or get that, like less of a, a decent deal. And I think again, people still relate that back to a YouTube channel or a different app. I think that's important to remember as well. Yeah, I've just what everyone was saying before like, do whatever you want, don't worry about what everyone else thinks. Um, it doesn't matter if it gets, doesn't get like a million likes. There's not really any predicting what's going to get a million likes. Really nice. Like some shark puppets might get a million likes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Very fun. Um, yeah, so just do whatever you want. If TikTok was like to suddenly just disappear, where would you be? Where else would you be able to like put out content that would get people to come in? I would be in my bed, like, <laughs> be like, what do I do? I actually have a job um, part time because going back to the question that Aaron asked, that was like, is this your job? I physically can't do one thing; it will drive me insane. I've tried it and I last like three months in a job, and I'm like, I need to do something else. Um, so my concentration span just doesn't really fit to that sort of thing. So I have a part time job in social. Um, just social media for a startup. So I think if TikTok died, it would be a massive shame. I don't think it's going to ever. I just can't see that happening. It's growing too much for that to be a thing. But um, yeah, if it ever went that route, I think we all 
I don't actually know. Instagram, Instagram Snapchat, YouTube. Yeah. yeah, but I don't like. I don't enjoy YouTube. I tried it, and it just sucks <gasps> the fun. I'm so sorry, but it really does suck the fun out of my day because I'm like, I'm focusing so much this whole time. Like, yeah, there's certain the platforms that for certain people. That's exactly it. So TikTok is just so chill. Um, so I, there would need to be another platform that was created. Fine too. Fine too. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 What about you guys? What do you think? Where did you I go? mean, I, I've always, I like my YouTube. I, I don't think like TikTok's ever going to replace YouTube. I think it's just a different type of content. And I think there's always going to be an app out there that you that you can find if you want to make content. Uh, yeah, so I would just carry on creating stuff and just put it on the internet wherever I can. People's Facebook accounts, yeah. I'm really enjoying Instagram. I love the combination of like captions so you can you're doing great on Instagram. I, love I like your Instagram. Right. Yeah, You're very creative on your Instagram. I like your captions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. acting and all that. Does it feel different if you've got like, more followers on one platform than another? What do you mean different? Like, it's like, what do you do? Say cry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so because I used to be really obsessed with it. I used to watch numbers all Time. It was like my favourite thing to do, especially when I was starting and you could see it like number by number. Um, so I think in that sense I would be really focused on it. But now, I suppose once you reach a goal that you've given yourself, you don't really focus on it so much. I don't know what like, To me it doesn't, like a number has not been something, I'm, I'm obviously very like, I go, yes, one million or yeah. two million, yeah. like, that's really exciting and I'm very grateful. But for me it's not about that number, it's about the number of people that actually care. Yeah, for sure. like, you have some people that follow you and just go, yeah, cool. And you have some people that follow you that you like develop an actual relationship with and you can, like, they can talk to you or feel, like, safer when they're there. And, like, that's the number that is important, I think. Yeah. And, and like, that's what I care about. Yeah. Is there a specific user that you would be inspired by on TikTok when you first started? Oh, Lauren Godwin. I like Loki's house. She's like one of my best she's friends. Now. Now. But she's so funny. Like, yeah. and also, oh, who was it the other day? I watched people, I watched one person's, I think it might be in that same, like, friendship group. You know how they were in, like, a clan? Um, just all of them make me die laughing. I just find them so funny. So, people that make you laugh, like, I would not, obviously, like, not copy, but, like, take inspiration. And be like, that's the kind of I remember I used to be, like, obsessed with Jaden and Jill, and now they're, like, brothers to me. So oh, it's really weird, weird. like, oh, they so followed, cool. the day they followed me, I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's happened, I've made it, I've made it, I've made it, made it. <laughs> um, but yeah, J Jordan, J Jordan and Jilma, uh, Jaden and Jilma, uh, I love them, they make me laugh so much, uh, yeah, people that make me laugh, so. I think the first person I started watching was Amelia Gethin, oh, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah I love yes. her, um, and I do feel like some of the Americans like Lele Pons and some of the old Viners that are starting on TikTok. I think they were uploading old Vines, they were nice, but yeah. Nice to do that. The only other one I really like is Ali Cat, but my stuff is not like hers at all. Ali Cat's the same. Yeah, she's, yeah she's great. I love her. Just shout out to Ali you got any ideas of how to get on the For You page on TikTok? Oh my god, I wish I knew. Everyone I asked that. I wish we knew. <laughs> and everyone just assumes that we have this like secret to the For You page. Wish we had. I wish I had. It's amazing. It, it is, it is. They won't put you on if you've got over PG content, right? I'm not right about that. Yeah. You so you've got to keep your content friendly, not yeah. letting anyone, you know, so no violence and no gore and all of that. I think that's changing now. Use really? the so. trending sounds. Yeah. Yeah. And hashtags as well. Um, so first of all, Holly, um, it's Andy's father and it's Ryan, I'm so glad you Oh my gosh, it's you! And second of all, what do you think like, was like the peak when you started like getting so many more likes and stuff on TikTok? Like, how long did it take you to get to like, that part where you really kind of made it? I think... Made it, that's what I'm saying. you've made it. Um, I think it comes in like waves. I don't know if you guys are the same. Like, I, I, I was stuck at like 200,000 for ages, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm fine, this is great, like there's a lot of people, I'm happy. And then suddenly, like, it went, bam, 650,000, like, and then you just feel the difference, and then it just goes again, and again, and again, and it's like, like, I don't feel like there's one defining moment, but it just goes, whoa, you just have little 
Okay, it's growing really, really fast. Yeah. And it's not. It's growing really, really fast. Yeah. So I don't think that's one defining moment of it. Um, I mean, when I hit like half a million, that's when I felt like amazing. I was like, <laughs> How do you guys deal with all this popularity? I don't think you have to deal with it if you love it. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm speaking for everyone here, like, we all love it. Like, it's just like, we're doing what we love and other people are loving it as well, so it's like, you don't really have to deal with it. It's also like a reward, right? Like, it shows you that you're, you're doing well. I think I was here for like five minutes yesterday and I was just by myself walking around the expo hall and a girl that I met last year ran up to me and she was like, oh my god, it's good to see this. It's kind of like a friendship, it's, it's, it's really nice and it, it kind of just like clarifies almost that like you're doing a good thing and you're making other people happy. So yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say like I'm dealing with it, I just think it's really like, just like a nice clarification. Very I hate nice. to have people like, uh, yeah, like everyone's a human being. And also, but when, when people meet their fans, I don't like calling them fans, but like, do you know what I mean? Like, meet them and then they're like, cool, hi, and uh, thanks for coming to see you later, bye. And I'm like, I literally got followers, why are you doing that? So, I follow you. I follow you. Do you follow me? <laughs> Amazing.